Fame. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Very fascinating news today. Uh, just moments ago, China, far western China, has actually experienced a 6.5 magnitude earthquake. And uh, Yanukovych, the president of Ukraine. Now, some call him the ex-president since the coup. And now that uh, Petro Poroshenko has uh, been uh, put in his place. But I still think that he deserves a title of president of Ukraine because what happened was certainly an inside job. And I have been waiting for quite some time myself to actually hear Yanukovych himself say for himself what actually really did go on in his country. Let's take a look at things that we're looking at here. Of course, the 6.5 magnitude earthquake here, the USGS uh, Geological Survey here showing what is going on here. Uh, 6.5 magnitude earthquake there uh, uh, in Kar Karkul uh, near Chazikstan. Uh, there, right next to their border there is where this earthquake happened. It was approximately 12 kilometers beneath the surface. That's a rel relatively uh, very shallow earthquake there. This kind of give you a little bit of map here, like I said, next to Chazikstan Chuzik uh, in far western China, uh, just outside of Kashi. Uh, the city, uh, a city there just to the east of this region here. No doubt they could probably feel the, the shaking of the earth as well in their region there. Kind of back out here, just give you a little bit of perspective of where we're at. We're looking at north of India there, uh, Pakistan to the uh, southwest as well, uh, Afghanistan definitely to the uh, southwest, more more of a westerly location, and of course, Chazikstan there. So you can't help but wonder what caused a 6.5 magnitude earthquake. And yet, I'm thinking clearly, you know, what's really getting me a lot of times is is just the thoughts here of biblical prophecy, you know, being fulfilled almost on a regular basis when we think of these things. I mean, did not Yeshua himself, that's Jesus, did he not say that there would be earthquakes in divers places, places uh, you know, and wars and rumors of wars? And we are definitely seeing the wars and rumors of wars, all right? Now, let's take a look over here. I said to you, Tass, uh, they actually spoke about Yanukovych, uh, his interview, ex-president says seizure of power in Ukraine was planned. Of course, that was that is none other than Viktor Yanukovych. As I say, he shouldn't be ex-president. He should still be the president of Ukraine. But thanks to the CIA, as we already know, uh, according to uh, John Stockwell, the former director of the CIA's uh, uh, of, uh, operations, has clearly said how that the United States is uh, very much active, that is the CIA, in toppling uh, legitimate democratic elected governments. And of course, Ukraine was no difference. And that's something that Yanukovych actually brings out in here. And by the way, he was in an interview um, uh, with uh, 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 Oliver Stone for a documentary about it. Uh, about this very this very thing that happened there, which ought to be interesting because you can't really say that Oliver Stone is going to be Russian propaganda. What's the U.S. going to do about that? Uh, who knows? Maybe they'll still twist it the U.S. narrative way. Uh, but anyway, on November 21st, former Ukraine President Viktor Yanukovych believes that he de that he de developments on Kiev's Independent Square on Medan in 2014 were planned in advance while their results did not depend on government decisions. Now watch what he says here. Very fascinating. He said, I signed the protocol, an agreement on the settlement of political crisis in Ukraine. So he's trying to make an agreement with these protesters. He, say, he says, however, sometime later, I realized that no matter what protocol we signed, the scenario to seize the power and stage a coup was planned and imminent. That is, it actually did not depend on our actions. The former president, in an interview with the U.S. film director Oliver Stone for his documentary entitled Ukraine, The Fire, aired by RIN TV channel. Yanukovych accused the U.S. establishment, and particularly Vice President Joe Biden, of disparity between the words and actions during the Maidan's events. According to Yanukovych, U.S. representatives were actively involved in planning and orchestrating the protests in Ukraine. We know this. George Soros, guess who was there? The same guy that causes all the problems and headaches that are going on in the United States. Yes, he was actually there. Not only George Soros, but guess who was there during the protests? You got it, John McCain. Well, it's kind of interesting. They want to compare Russia to ISIS when the European Parliament was meeting the other day. But you know what? 
John McCain, he's the guy that was there that was helping build ISIS and funding ISIS with his picture taken with ISIS. And he was also there during the time of the protests in Ukraine, telling the protesters that America has your back. Well, that's a pretty much a confession, if you ask me. Anyway, but, you know, it's more there, there's more... Uh, more smoking evidence to this gun here, you might say, and that is the latest WikiLeaks. Uh, Sputnik bringing this out. I'm sure they're going to say this is Russian propaganda once again. Documents evidencing U.S. arming Yemeni forces ahead of the war. What do you know? WikiLeaks with another bombshell, if you might say, released on Friday more than 500 documents from the United States Embassy in Yemen offering documentary evidence of Washington arming, training, and funding Yemeni forces ahead of the war. Hmm, sounds familiar, doesn't it? This document reveals, among other things, procurement of many different weapon types, aircraft, vessels, vehicles, proposals for maritime border security control, and Yemeni procurement of U.S. biometric systems. That's interesting. U.S. Embassy in Yemen closed in February 2015, just a month before the conflict erupted. Hmm, another interesting thing, isn't it? That was something that appeared in Russian media as well, I thought was kind of interesting, is that, uh, you know, they were planning that, or at least Russia believed that what might happen in order to bring the United States in the war there in Ukraine was to have a Sukhoi, make it look like it's a Russian attack on the U.S. Embassy. Well, it's not happened as of yet, but you know what? You just never know what's going to happen or when it's going to happen. And of course, who will get blamed in the end? Kind of like the situation we have in Syria right now, where the Syrian military did take and bomb and uh, dropped a bomb in eastern Aleppo that killed three Turkish uh, soldiers and injured 10. Now, right now, though, Turkey is uh, claiming that this happened elsewhere. They don't want to really admit where these soldiers were. But we're already seeing all kinds of propaganda. In fact, we found out about another uh, journalist, thanks to somebody out there kind enough to send us the information to us there, another independent journalist uh, from Canada that's speaking about all the propaganda that the West is pumping out about Syria. Can't wait to share some of that information with you. Hopefully it will truly be a blessing for you guys. Uh, anyway, Let's kind of give you a little update there. I will be uh, giving you the Shabbat message on Danoon Institute, of, uh, uh, our YouTube channel there. I have a strong feeling, though, I'm going to load it here on Israeli News Live, and I'm going to tell you why, because what you're going to find out, I think, has a lot of newsworthy merit. You're going to find out why the Pope of Rome claims that he would baptize aliens. You're going to find out what I do believe, and I think I can support the type of war that is coming. I'm talking about the war after World War III and we may very well get attacked by aliens, but not so much aliens, but those 10,000 chargers, those demons that have been loosed in the Euphrates there. We are looking at a serious battle. We're talking about a battle where God says in, a, in our own canon, what did he say there? Paul said, we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. High places. Have we ever thought that maybe we should be looking up to those high places where these demons are coming from? All right, well, I want to talk to you about how you need to wake up. We need to wake up. I don't want to just point a finger here. We need to wake up to who we are because if David had to defeat giants in his day, if Joshua Benun, who I am named after, if he had to defeat the giants in his day, we better get ready because they're on their way back. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.